Hello! You're listening to Give Me Something That'll Haunt Me When You're Not Around, written by Tizy and narrated by Nolp. Chapter 2. Stuck on the Thought of You Yuichi lasts another whole day before his scraped-together willpower completely fails him. Okay, half a day. At work, he approaches Sunita in that lull between the lunch and dinner rush while she's folding linens for the tables and makes his daring move. Her phone is propped up against the napkin holder, playing a music video by a human performer Yuichi is unfamiliar with. Sunita is bopping along to it and doesn't notice Yuichi until he's standing directly in front of her. When she does, she jumps about a foot in the air, yelping loud enough that a few of their co-workers on the other side of the dining room turn and shoot them judgmental looks. I'm so sorry, Yuichi fumbles. He's constantly accidentally sneaking up on people, but just watch him try to sneak out of the house on purpose to go joyriding with Chizu and Kitsune. He gets caught nine times out of ten, usually before he's even halfway out his window. It's a joke. Ugh, I spend all my time with ninjas these days and I still get spooked, Sunita says, patting her chest where her heart must have leaped in surprise, but her tone is good-natured. You'd think I'd be used to people popping out of nowhere by now, with how often my girlfriend's little brothers do it, but nope. Anyway, sorry, did you need something? Uh, hi, he says at length. To his alarm and dismay, he doesn't actually know where to go from there. It's very possible he didn't think this through. I mean, I just wanted to say hi. Sunita saves him with a smile, her visible eye crinkling with the force of it. Hi, Usagi she says brightly. Lunch was wild, huh? Did you make good tips? Yeah, actually. It almost made my tent top worth it. His coworker laughs, commiserating the way only a fellow server possibly could, but her eyes drop back down to the napkins. She mentioned to him once that she has to split her focus constantly to be sure not to leave slime residue behind on everything she touches. Yuichi is finished with his side work for now, so he reaches for a stack of the linens and drags it across the table toward himself, settling in to help. Sunita seems happy to have his company and doesn't mind leading the conversation, his brief, generally one-word contributions no deterrent at all. It's always been easy to talk to her. Um, hey, Yuichi says very casually when he's bolstered enough courage. I was wondering if you had Leonardo's number? I don't have it, and it's been a while since I've seen him. Oh! To his immediate disappointment, Sunita looks apologetic. Oh, I totally would, but it's not really a good time. Things are kind of touchy right now. Yuichi focuses very hard on the napkin he's folding, because otherwise he'd probably stare at her as if he's hanging off her every word. And that... well, that would make him seem desperate. And he's not desperate. Because of the invasion? He asks. His friend nods, her bubbly good cheer displaced. Yeah, it was really bad. I don't know all the details, but April and her boys were right in the thick of things. And after... well... after... Leo wasn't doing too good. It was pretty scary. So his siblings sort of just closed ranks around him. She slimes the napkin she's holding and makes a face at it, balling it up in her hands. She finds another smile for Yuichi and adds, Hey, how about this? I'll text April and see what she thinks, okay? I'll bet Leo would love to hear from a friend. Sunita is the best. He's buying her boba tea after work tonight. And maybe if she gets him Leonardo's number, he'll buy her boba tea after work from now until the day they die. Later that night, when he's helping wash dinner dishes, Yuichi's phone starts vibrating like it's fighting for its life. When he checks it, he finds messages from Sunita rolling in. She's a quintuple texture on a good day. Hey! Good news! April says she'll meet up with you tomorrow. You're off, right? I said you'd come to the restaurant. She's busy in the afternoon, so it'll have to be before 11. Yuichi notes right away that there was no mention of his potentially not meeting up with April tomorrow. He gets the feeling he doesn't have a choice. That's great. I'll ask Auntie, but I should be free. Okay, April will see you there at 10 a.m. sharp. Thanks, Sunita. I owe you one. No prob. The bunny emojis would rankle if they were sent by literally anyone else, but from her they managed to be adorable. 
Yuichi locks his phone and sets it face down on the counter, then clears his throat. Auntie glances at him, rubbing a sponge around the inside of a casserole dish. Two of his cousins are parked at the counter with coding manuals and coloring pages, but two is better than the full audience of five, so Yuichi goes for it. Would it be okay if I skipped my morning chores tomorrow? He asks quickly. I know the farm bottle still needs to be fixed, but I promise I'll get it done. You stay far, far away from my robot. Cousin Botan says loudly without even deigning to look up at him, little seal point face buried in an unethically sourced textbook thicker than Usagi's arm. It's still holding a grudge from what you did to it last time. It was an accident, and it was as much Momiji's fault as mine, Yuichi shoots back. Momiji sends him a look of absolute betrayal, her russet-colored fur bristling in offense. Was not! You were the one who said we should play samurai! All right, enough. Auntie says with a clap of her hands that causes little dish soap suds to scatter. Botan and Momiji both settle down, but considering they're ten and six years old respectively, it's not much of a victory. Yuichi, what are you up to now? Yuichi twists the dish towel in his hands. Uh, so you know, you know Leonardo? His cousins both snort. Yuichi whips around to pin them with a glare. What was that? Why did you do that? Do we know Leonardo? Botan asks dryly. He's very sarcastic for such a tiny rabbit. Hamato Leonardo? Gee, I don't know, you only bring him up nine billion times a day. I do not! Ignore them, baby, Auntie says, amused. What's this about Leonardo? Uh, well, he hasn't been around lately, and I work with his big sister's girlfriend, so I asked her about him and she told me that he was, I mean, I guess he got hurt during that invasion. She couldn't tell me much, so I was going to meet her sister tomorrow morning. Auntie drops the sponge in the dishwasher and braces her hands on the edge of the sink, brow furrowed. What? That poor boy was hurt and you didn't tell me until now? I didn't know until now, Yuichi says. Then a little desperately, he adds, Please be normal about this. I'm making him a care package and you're making sure he gets it. Auntie steamrolls over him in her most no-nonsense tone. She abandons the dishes left in the sink and starts bustling around the kitchen. If you're seeing his sister in the morning, I'll need to get started on it now. Yuichi gazes out the window at the darkening sky, praying that his ancestors will smite him on the spot, but unfortunately he lives to see tomorrow. Also unfortunately, April doesn't cancel or blow him off the next morning, and is even earlier than their agreed-upon meet-up time. She's standing outside run of the mill when he gets there, her arms crossed and her mouth set, and if she's nervous about all the big yokai milling around on the street, opening their stores or heading down to the market, she doesn't show it at all. She picks Yuichi out of the crowd with steely brown eyes, and he steps up his pace a little bit, Spot trotting faithfully at his side. Good morning, he says, hoping it's a safe enough start when she seems annoyed with him already. Yeah, you too, April replies. She considers him for a minute, then uncrosses her arms and stands a little taller, squaring her shoulders and jutting out her chin. Sunita told me you wanted Leo's number. Look, if this is some kind of joke, I'm not laughing. Um... What? Dumbly, Yuichi parrots. A joke? Leo may be the absolute worst sometimes, but he's still one of the best people I know all the time, the human goes on hotly, as if they're both on the same page here. Yuichi has the sinking feeling that they're reading completely different books. Whatever you're trying to get back at him for, it ain't worth it. You do anything to hurt him, and his brothers would go on the warpath. And frankly, so would I. I'm not trying to get back at him for anything, Yuichi blurts. Honestly, the only thing he wants payback for is all the real estate in his brain that Leonardo takes up, but that's not something he's willing to admit out loud with his mouth where someone might hear him. Why would you think that? Because you can't stand Leo, April says plainly. You always look pissed off when he's around. I know he can be annoying as heck, but if you can't see how good he is too, then that's your loss. Something in Yuichi's chest folds right in half. Wow, it hurts a lot. Historically, resting grouch face runs in his family. Usagi Miyamoto was known for many things, one of which was his dark glowering expression. 
He isn't smiling in a single painting of him that exists. Yuichi is usually proud of every single trait that he's told he inherited from that famous samurai, but maybe he could do without this one. Now he's combing through every interaction he's ever had with Leonardo, every conversation. He's picking apart each exchange and trying to look at it from a third party's point of view. Did it seem like he didn't want Leonardo around? Is that what Leonardo thought? The striped turtle had a way of plowing unceremoniously through uncomfortable silences, of carrying the conversation when Yuichi's tongue was all tied up, and it seemed as easy for him as it was for Sunita, her vibrant personality and Leonardo's charming one filling the gaps Yuichi's social awkwardness tended to create. But maybe it wasn't that at all. Maybe it was easy for Leonardo to talk to Yuichi because he figured he had nothing to lose, because he thought Yuichi had disliked him already. Suddenly, the only thing Yuichi wants to do is go back home, march up the stairs to his loft, climb back into bed, and stay there for approximately a hundred years. Spot leans his head against Yuichi's leg, sensing his downward spiral the way hounds are trained to sniff out foxes. That's not true, Yuichi says. It sounds weak to his own ears. He doesn't know what else to say, and Leonardo's sister isn't willing to fill the silence the way Yuichi's friends are. He looks everywhere but at her, flexing his hands, then remembers what he's holding. Oh, this is from my aunt, he tells the ground, holding out the embroidered bag auntie forced upon him before he could slip out the door. Sorry, I told her about, and she... Yeah. Please tell Leonardo it's from anyone else. Tell him it's from Senor Hueso. He'll know it's not from his tío at a glance, April says. She sounds surprised and agreeably lifts the bag out of his hands. Huffing a laugh at how heavy it is, she gazes at Yuichi thoughtfully, then takes a peek inside. He probably should have seen that coming. Yuichi does his best to sink into the ground and disappear as she takes in the Tupperware containers and plastic-wrapped pastries. April looks back up at him. Some of the ice in her eyes has thawed. I'm definitely telling him it's from you, she announces. From Auntie, Yuichi stresses desperately. Right. April says. She's grinning out right now. She shoulders the bag like it weighs about as much as a handful of grapes, and props her free hand on her hip and says, You got your phone with you? Uh-huh, Yuichi says, dazed. Is this what whiplash feels like? He felt sort of like this when he crashed his bike in the watermelon field last year. Give it. April makes a grabby gesture, swiping his phone from him immediately when he holds it out. She taps at it for a while, then tosses it back. Her own phone chimes from the pocket of her jacket, cluing Yuichi into what she was doing. There. You've got my number and I've got yours. If Leo likes his present, I'll pass your digits along. Her tone has warmed considerably. She winks at him, and Yuichi has to remind himself sternly that it would not be cool to bury his face in his ears and hide there until she went away. Is Leonardo's entire family like this? Because it feels like Yuichi has just survived a tornado or tsunami or some other terrifying force of nature, and this conversation wasn't even ten minutes long. April waves cheerfully and takes off at a brisk jog, weaving through the hidden city streets like she was born and raised here. Yuichi sinks onto a bench, presses his forehead against his knees, and calls Chizu while he's still all curled over into a yokai pretzel. I'm calling in a favor you owe me he says by way of hello the second she picks up. Meet me at the Market Street. I don't owe you anything, she replies dryly. It involves getting ice cream and making fun of my life choices. We'll be there in twenty. Yuichi ends up blowing the rest of his pocket money for the week on parfaits from their favorite street food stall, and his friends definitely don't hold back laughing at him when he unpacks the latest installment in the Leonardo saga, but it doesn't seem as hopeless with the three of them around. Gen in particular, big softy that he secretly is, hoists Yuichi up to ride on his shoulders as they make their meandering way back to the farm. It's the rarest of gestures. Not even Kitsune's best doe eyes get her a shoulder ride. His friends make Yuichi feel ten feet tall. And the next morning, he wakes up to nine new texts from an unknown number. A lot of them are just strings of exclamation points and emojis. He knows exactly who this is. Yuichi's fingers tighten around his phone as his ribs seem to tighten around his heart. A grin spills across his face before he can help it, mirroring the relentless summer sunshine pouring in from the window above his bed. 
That's the end of chapter two. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.